and gentlemen, we are back. Episode 18, was it? The Love of Funny Podcast is back. Ashia and Ali. Um, sorry for the time off. I wanted to do it last week, but I broke my leg. Didn't feel like doing it. Um, yeah, we, we're back. I took a shit last night. I shit my pants last night because of the fight card and whole stuff. Oh my god, Ali last time was electric, man. It was just fucking electric. How do you feel about last night? Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Let's just get started with the last early prelim. Actually, yes, because our boy Anders. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, he did a good job, but he should have tapped. I mean, he should have tapped. I'm, I'm actually okay with him with him tapping out, you know, because knowing that what Muniz would have done to that arm, I'm glad he tapped and he didn't break his arm. South African guy. Um, he pulled out due to an injury. Drakus, he pulled out because of an injury. First of all, Eric Kenders, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Mad because he tapped, and you know you cannot be t- mad because someone tapped. He knows that if Muniz breaks that arm, it can cost him his whole fight career. And I'm glad he tapped. And Muniz is a goddamn wizard on the ground. The guy who subbed Jacare, he's a yeah. wizard. All right. So, what? the first. Prelim, we had Bruno Silva versus Jordan Wright. My God, Bruno S- Silva, he is a savage. Just he just clawed him. He is a savage. He's a fucking savage. He's really good. He's good. He's good. Now, what's his record in the UFC? Four and oh, three and oh, four and oh. Man, I think he deserves a top 15 opponent next. His record in the UFC is 3-0. 3-0. and, now. Three and now. He deserves a top five, top 10, uh, top 15 opponent. He deserves it. He beat Jordan, right? Who's a... He's awesome. Jordan is awesome. But Bruno, he's fucking awesome too, you know. He did... Amazing. That knockout was scary as fuck. That knockout was scary as fuck. I enjoy I enjoyed the fight, but to be honest with you, I think Jordan didn't look right that night too. Jordan didn't look as good as he always does. What do you think? Yeah. He just Yeah, it was just brutal. He just went flying. Yeah. Actually, I closed my eyes like this, and then I opened them and seen him fly across the octagon. <laughs> Man, last night I was really tired. You know, I was really tired, but I stood up all night. On the next watch the fights. My boy, Tai Tui Basa. The Shiri. The Shiri. What's the Sakai? Can I? I'm. I'm gonna go do a shoey right now. With water though. Not with uh beer. I don't drink, but can I, should I go and bring my shoe and do a shoey? Yeah. That's disgusting, man. No no no, I'm not gonna do it. I'll do it later on Instagram. I'll do it later. No, 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 I'm not gonna do it. That's disgusting. I'll buy I'll buy a brand new shoe, then I'll do a shoey. I'm not gonna do a shoey. It's disgusting. Imagine, imagine, imagine drinking beer out of somebody else's shoe. That, that's fucking disgusting. But hey, Thai TV was a, the first round. I think Augusto won the first round. I guess. Yeah. It was close. It was close. But I gave it to Augusto. How the hell was that? But Thai, Thai. Ty is just so good, and he's getting better and better every day. I mean, compare him to his last four fights. 
every fight he's shown different stuff. Every fight he's looking better. Every fight he's doing better stuff. His hands look great. He was grappling. He was grappling last night. He was gra- grappling. He showed a little bit of that grappling, but at the end of the day, the hands did the job. What do you think about Ty? Just him as a fighter. Honestly, he, he's deserving a big name. Let's let's look at that. And he's a big star too. He's a star. He's becoming a star. Let's look at the heavyweight top ten. Okay, so I would love to see him against the loser of Darkus and Lewis. I would love to see him against the loser of that fight. Not against the winner, because the winner is going to be in the top five. But it, but the loser, I would love to see him against the loser of that fight. What do you think? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or, um, Jorginho Rosenstrey. That's not bad either. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? I mean, the whole night was electric, man. We had a lot of fun that night. Uh, we move on to Pedro Munoz versus Dominic Cruz. Jesus Christ. Can Dominic Cruz get any better? Can this guy get any better? He just... He looked awesome, man. It reminded me of the good old days when Dominic was a champion and he was beating the crap out of everybody with that footwork, with that, with that speed. I mean... The, the the chin is not quite there like it was. But again, he's won two in a row against two tough guys, toughest guys, one two of the toughest guys in, in the 135 division, and he beat the crap out of them. I mean, apart from getting dropped in the first round, he was... I mean, Pedro Munoz couldn't do shit about it. I mean, Dominic was ending 10... 10 punch combinations on him. Pedro was like, I don't know, what can I, what should I do? <laughs> he was seriously confused, I should say. Mm-hmm. What do you think about Dominic? Do you think he can be champion again? No. I guess Al I can't see him beat. I can't see him beating Aljo. But not against Piorion. Piorion, he's just different. Even but I will. I can't see him beating Aljo. I can see him beating Aljo because Dominic's got great takedown defense, and he's also got better striking. So I can see him beating Aljo, but I don't see him beating Peter Jan. I can see him beating TJ Dillashaw again. I can't. I don't know about Jose Aldo because Jose Aldo's the same thing right now. He's coming back. He made a comeback. Man, just old guys. I'm just glad this these old guys are coming back and winning fights and it is so nostalgic. GSP. GS. Imagine if GSP comes back. Imagine if GSP comes back. And to be. <laughs> Khabib is not going to come back. I'll We're, tell you why he's not going to come back. Let's Oliver, move on to the next fight. That's the reason. Oliveira. Yeah, Oliver, exactly. After the fight yesterday, last night. T- name me one guy could be fought who's really good at jiu-jitsu. Name one. And I don't want to hear the Sanchez. I was going to say the Sanchez. Not that um, The best one he's fought with the best jiu-jitsu is Dustin Poirier. And we saw what Charles did to Dustin. Wow. He got Poirier down easy as a McGregor. Dude, let's just talk about this card and we'll get to the main event. Because I've got a lot of things to say about the main event, though. I've got a lot of things to say. My next one, my boy, Josh Emmett. Against Danny. Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett, he he's so powerful. That right hand of his is just electric. Wait, who do you think won the fight? 
Oh, Josh Emmett. He won the first and a, and a third round. Me too. Whoever scored a 32 and a 7, yeah. you need to get your eyes checked. Yeah, that would be really. Good. Really, you need to get your eyes checked because 3027, it was not 3027. The second round was clearly Dan, Dan Ige's round. The first round, he got the knockdown, and the third round, he was doing better on the feet. Josh Emmett won that. And, and you know, congratulations to Josh. He's a great fighter. I would love to see him against a higher-ranked opponent. I would love to see him against the winner of Giga Chikadze and Calvin Cater. Yeah. I would love to see him fight oh, those two. We are talking the Korean zombie. Or Korean zombie. That's or, a good one, too. Ortega. Ortega. I think it's a little bit too early for him to fight Ortega. But a fight... A fight let's say... Let's say he fights um, the winner of Chikadze and Cater, then he fights Ortega. That's fine. But right now, Brian Ortega is not a good move. Give him triple A. Or, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. He's a he's a good fighter. I love his style. He's, he's It was entertaining last night. And to be honest with you, I give him a lot of uh, credit because of that power. And his wrestling is also great. So so he can, you know, hang with the top five of this division. He is great. And I don't know what the fuck you just left, but please come back and sit your ass down. Uh, you're looking for a, he's looking for a microphone. All right, go on. I'll give you time. Plug your microphones in. All right. Uh, you ready now? I don't know what the fuck is doing. You ready now? Should we continue? Should we continue right now? <laughs> yeah. All right. A little bit of commercial breaks from Ali Stanley. All right. What do we have next? Sean O'Malley. Sugar Sean. O'Malley. My God. This guy's striking is just on another level. He is on another level when it comes to striking. And, le- and he said he was injured before the fight. He, he had a broken rib. I don't know if that's true or not, but that finishing sequence, it was amazing. It was pretty. It was pretty damn amazing. But do you think he should fight a top 15 opponent next? Yeah, I've already got the name. Who? Who's that? It's Frankie Edgar, lad. Frankie Edgar? Oh, man. I don't want to see Frankie lose, man. No, I don't want to see... Give him number 10, Marlon. Mar- Marlon Moraes? That's a good one, too. Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's give him Marlon Moraes. He's a good fight, too. The striking would be electric. The first one to land that shot... Is gonna go out, but Dana Dana keeps saying that he is not ready for top fifteen. No, he, he said he is ready now. He he, keep, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with Dana. I mean, I don't know, but I would love to see Sean in the top fifteen. Go, all right. Next one, Cody Garbrandt. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Cody No Chin versus Kai France. Ah, oh, God. I'm sad. 
I love Kai, but I also love Cody. I think Cody should hang him up, bro. He should hang him up. It's time. It's time that he hangs them up because that chin is not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better, though. It's literally it's like a Christmas love. <laughs> Dude, that chin is not going to get any better. It will. And No, it won't. It will. And he keeps getting knocked out, which is... Um, He's lost, he's lost five out of six, and he's been knocked out in four of those. He knocked out, he got knocked out by uh, TJ twice, Pedro Munoz. How about that? And now Kyle Carl Front. That's brain damage. <laughs> <coughs> All right, next fight. I don't, That's I brain damage. That's just brain damage. He should okay. hang him up. Hang them up before you go. Come back to the Phantom Way and fight the Sugar Show. No. 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 I don't want to see Cody get knocked out cold again. I don't want that. I don't want to see that again. I've already seen that four times. I've already seen that four times. That's a lot of brain damage. I don't want to see Cody get knocked out cold again. He will. I don't want that. For me. Dude, you're, you're just so confident. I like the confidence. All right, Jeff Neal, um, Santiago, Pons and Newbo. I, I actually fell asleep during that fight, so tell me what happened. Wow, this kid. No, I fell bad. asleep. I was tired yeah. as fuck. I mean... The first round, then it was Neil, and then the second round was it was like back and forth striking, and, and there was like, yeah, it was kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, I was awake, like I I was like I fell asleep like the first round, like the first couple of minutes, and I would wake up. I mean, it was not as uh, advertised. It was not what we thought it would be, I believe. Was it was it boring or was it like I mean it was just, it wasn't interesting, it wasn't boring, it was just ugh, ugh. I mean listen I mean when you I, got two good guys Let me be real. Santiago, listen, kid. You're not the same guy from twenty sixteen, seventeen. You are you be you got knocked out by Lee, who got smashed. Let's not high, hate on fighters here, Ali Stanley. But uh, you're right. Santiago mm-hmm. is not the same that he was in 2016, 2017. He's not the same guy. He's not the same. Look, you know the injuries. He was on the verge of title contention, I believe. Which one? Santiago. This one. Yeah, no. he was on the. It was a near he was a near title shot before he got all the injuries and the shit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean he will, he's unlucky, man. He's unlucky. He's unlucky. And again, I didn't watch the fight, so I don't know what happened. Let's move on to the call main event. The fight that made me shit my pants and I had to change my underpants Mate, watching stop. the fights. Stop, he's lying, he's lying. Yeah, I'm I'm lying, but that's what happened. I shit, my, I nearly shit my pants, especially at the finish, and how quick Amanda tapped. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that fight was just in, it was just crazy. All right, crazy. Let me let me do what the viewers want. To see. So Pena came out swarming up. So Pena had a really good game plan. And then yeah. she went to the takedown, and then uh, Nunes ended up on top. And Nunes was just beating up. Had the first round easily. Yeah. And Nunes, it looked like she was overconfident because she was just smiling in the corner. She was laughing when she was on top of Pena. And, and then second round started. 
boom. And you're Bang. Bang. You're rotter. Bang. 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 Pena no. rocks her and Nunes just empties the gas from the finisher, which doesn't work. And then Pena rocks her again, takes her down. Oh, my God. I mean, first of all, let me say something about Amanda Nunes. When you are the greatest fighter of all time, when you're dominant as Amanda is, of course you're going to go into fights overconfident. You're going to be going there overconfident thinking that she, this girl's easy work. I'm going to just go in there and knock her out in the first 10, 10 seconds. But, man, Juliana Pena was confident as fuck. And a lot of people, I don't know if you've seen that, they were like, on comment sections everywhere. They were like, well, uh, she's confident. She's putting the work in. Amanda by first round KO. And look what happened. Juliana Pena came back and not, and choked her out in the second round. And Amanda tapped quick. She tapped quick. She didn't want to be in there. I don't know why. Because she, uh, she was fatigued. She was hurt. And that's, the, that's every time Amanda's lost the fight. That's, you know, DC pointed this out too. Every time Amanda's lost a fight, no, I don't know if it was DC. No, it was someone else. Um, I don't know who it was though. Every time Amanda lost a fight, that's the same thing. She empties the gas tank, and then she gets TKO'd or uh, submitted. No, can you say that? No, it was. I was watching uh, the post-fight press conference. I don't know. Which, uh, it wasn't the UFC's one. It was, like, those other YouTube YouTube channels, like, MMA junkies and stuff. You see the two guys are sitting there and talking. Um, but I don't know who it was. I don't know. I don't know the guy's name. But he was saying the same thing. Um, but Amanda Nunes, do you think she will come back to 135? Yeah, for a rematch. I think... I think... Juliana Pena can use this opportunity and do what Patricia Pitbull didn't do in Bellator. She can be like, all right, I want to give Amanda her rematch. I will give her her rematch, but I want to do it at 145 because she already beat her, right? She already beat her. She can go and win a second world title, right? She can go in there and win a second world title if she beats Amanda again. And if she moves up and gives Amanda the rematch at 145, if she loses, she's not going to lose the belt, right? She will, she will not lose the belt because that's not her division and, he's, and she's not the champion of that way division. She, if she moves up and beats Amanda, she'll be the double champ. She will be known maybe as the greatest fight of all time in women's division. Even though Amanda is still the great, uh, they might call her the greatest fighter of all time because she's got, she, she'll get two wins over Amanda. But right now, she needs to be smart about this. She should be like, I'll give her her rematch. I'll fight her again, but I won't 45. Because if she loses, she's not going to lose the belt. And if she wins, she'll be a double champ. Do you think that's what, he, what she should do? Give her a rematch at 145. Because if she wins again, she's going to be a double champ. And if she loses, she's not going to lose the belt. And they bounce away. I don't know, man. I don't know. I would love to see. I would love it if she did that. But if not, well, we'll see what happens. All right, let's go to the main event. Main event of the evening. Uh, anything you want to say before I just unload everything I've ha- I have here? Or a bomb. Stop hating on people, Ali. Stop hating on. He's just a big fanboy. Don't be a fanboy, Ali. Um. <laughs> my goodness, I, I'm just gonna say that Charles Oliveira. He's the best. He's the best. He's the best. 
And I believe if he beats Gaethje, and if he beats whoever's next after Gaethje, I don't know. He will fight the winner of Benil Daryush after Benil Daryush and Islam Makhachev after um, the Gaethje fight. Daryush is checking Islam to sleep. Uh, we'll see what happens. But again, Charles, my God, he's a monster on the ground. On the feet, he's great, he's technical, but the chin. He needs to. He needs to. He needs to stop being overconfident on the feet because next guy he's gonna fight it has dynamite in his hands. He has dynamites, and I don't want to see Charles Oliveira get knocked out viciously because when people lose to Justin Gaethje, they go on shit ton of loss losing streak. They're gonna lose a shit ton of fights. And they'll get cut. What? But, All right. All right. So but let's see. Let's see. If, who do, when do you think they're going to fight, though? When do you think they're going to fight? I say, I'll say in March. Too early, lads. It's going to be May. May? Maybe April. It's definitely going to be around spring. Let's, let's see. They do... The when is uh Char- when is Benil Daryush? February. February. So next uh two months from now. So let's say Oliveira, he should get about two defenses in next year. Yeah. Or May, April time one, but hopefully October time. Uh, I believe uh, this is what's gonna happen if he beats Justin Gaethje. Let's say in May. They'll fight in May. Um, and he beats Justin Gaethje. Then I would love to see him fight uh, the winner of Islam Makhachev and Benir Daryush in um, September. I want to see what's next for Dustin Doofus Poirier. You're just hating on Dustin Poirier right there. You're just unloading on Dustin Poirier. He's a big McGregor fan. What can I say? So are you, kid. Um, but hey, Dustin, uh, let's talk about Poirier here for a second. I mean, Poirier, I don't know what to say about Poirier. He, just, he didn't look good on the ground. I thought he broke a rib. I mean, on the ground, he held uh, Charles for a round, which is what he said he should have done against Khabib, you know, lose a round. Losing a round is better than losing a fight. That's that's a good uh, statement. That's an accurate statement. But I don't know. I feel like he was smart not going to the ground with him the first in the first round. You know, he did them. He did. He didn't do the mistake that Michael Chandler did. You know, Michael Chandler hurt him and he followed him on the on the ground. You know, Charles Oliveira, if he's not gonna submit you and he's hurt. He knows how to hold you down to save himself. And he did a great job. When Charles, when he dropped Charles, he said, get up. The second round, Charles got a takedown. He stayed on top for like two or three minutes. The, and then the finish, the finishing sequence was weird to me. I mean, Dustin could have... Uh, my, uh, actually, Michael Chandler tweeted out. He said, "I would have slammed him," like he yeah. said, like he jumped on his back. I mean, it worked for Chandler. He didn't get submitted. It worked for Chandler. He didn't get submitted. He got knocked out, but he did. It worked for Chandler, and for Dustin, I don't know, man. He looked weird to me in that fight. He looked like he looked sloppy after the first what? round. You have to do against Oliveira and not against Connor. It's annoying. I mean, he the knees to the body really yeah. hurt him. The, those knees to the body really hurt him. Yeah. Um, the the boxing of Oliveira it was great. He his boxing looked improved from the last fight. 
to this fight. And again, now, now Conor McGregor can jump in and be like, I want the four fight. I want the quadrilogy with Poirier. Because, you know, Chael Sonnen said, if Poirier beats Oliveira, Conor might not get a fourth fight. But if he loses, he will get a fourth fight. Now, looking at what happened last night, I believe Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor will fight again. I believe so. Do you think that will happen right now? Maybe maybe April next year or July or maybe September? Oh, man. All right, let's... let's, let's all right, you get me. It's actually um, champ day. This day, six years ago, he destroyed Jose Aldo McGregor. Really? Wait a yeah. minute. It's the 12th Wait. of December. Oh, shit. No way. So, it's, it's, it's December already? My God. Dude, we're dying pretty fast out here. Come on. Everything is going so fast. Like, Are you watching so next, fast. You watching Dark Lewis next week? Uh, I've got school, so no. I'm, I'm not going to watch it. Jake Paul's fighting that day as well. Who gives a shit about Jake Paul? Come on, especially, Tyron. Especially since Tyron is fighting Jake. And Tommy pulled out. I watched it when I went. I, I, I don't, I'm not paying for it. But I'm not it. paying. Hey, you want a link? You want a link? No, I'm not. Uh, I need to get sleep. I mean, I've got school, so I'm not going to watch it. But, hey, I hope Tyron can knock him out. But, again, I don't see him knocking him out. Because yes. he's too static. He's too... Precious. He's frozen. He's frozen. All right. So, so we're we'll going on to some big fight news since we haven't done a podcast because of you. Although when you got, when you got a broken leg and you can't walk, I mean I've got to walk from my room to here, and it hurts. It hurts pretty bad. So yeah. All right. So. All right. So yesterday, around. Let me get the time zone up when this news broke. This n- news. Broke exactly at shit. What what is it about? What is it about? At four thirty p.m. UK time, this broke. John oh, Rakitic versus R- Rakitic is March twenty six, and it's in. It's in the nationwide arena in. Hawaii, Ohio, I think. Um, it's. I'm glad it's official because I would love to see Jan Brahovic get back and win a fight again. Yeah, but th- I, yeah. Yeah, it's a tough fight. It's a tough fight, but I think Brahovic can get it done. Yeah, I, I see him getting it done. Buy me tickets now. Dude, if I had money to buy tickets, I wouldn't have been here. I would have been uh, out all night. I would have been to US in Las Vegas watching UFC 269 live in attendance. Okay, Not the next me. fight. We had... Why not you? Um, UFC 270. No. Uh, official. Yeah. Wait. All right, oh. so... We have so Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Yarn rematch is planned for February March. All right, uh, let's hope Aljo does. If uh, do you think if Aljo pulls out, they're just gonna strip him off the title? What he said on his podcast, he said, "If I I know if I pull out, they will strip me." They will strip him. They will. You won the title in not the best way possible. It's been and, a bit, by the time your next fights, if it's March, it's been a whole year. Yeah. I mean, and still, I hope that happens. 
Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Um, let's see. If Alja pulls out, they're going to strip him off. And they're going to be like, go fuck yourself, kid. They're just going to promote Peter Young to the Undisputed Champion. And I believe that would be a good move if he pulls out again. But I don't think he's going to pull out because the title, he worked hard for it, even though it wasn't, he didn't win it in a good way. But, again, I would love to see him fight again. But I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. So... We had some news a couple of last week. Kevin Lee has been cut from the UFC. Wow, I cannot believe that. It seems like it was yesterday that he was fighting for the world title. This time flies so fast, but um, I don't know, man. I, I, I think that wasn't a bad move, but... Because Kevin was not going to beat anyone. I don't think he was going to beat anyone. But, listen, I I don't know, man. It's sad because Kevin Lee's a great fighter. He's fought big guys. He's fought good guys. He's fought Daniel Rodriguez. He's fought, in his last two fights, he fought Daniel Rodriguez, who's a, who's a dark horse of the welterweight division. And he's fought... The current lightweight champion in his last two fights. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a little bit cruel to see him get cut. And there are a lot of fighters that are not winning fights. I don't want to say any names because I know people will be mad. But there are a lot of fighters that are not winning fights. And they they have they've lost like maybe okay. like six fights in a row and are not getting cut or forced to retire but a young guy who has he still has some potential to be you know to achieve what he wants get gets cut i mean it's sad but again kevin lee's unlucky i hope he can achieve what he wants you know and what he wants is to become a world champion I don't know, man. Of Bellator. I don't know. Maybe Bellator, maybe PFL, maybe somewhere else. No. All right. Let's see if we had any other news recently. I mean, um, just uh, the... Just Josh and make your kid. I mean, we... Oh, we did have one. We had Jack Romanson versus Sean Strickland. Ooh, Sean Strickland is back. February 5th. I don't know what he's going to say on media day and stuff, but I, be, I my okay. prediction is he's going to say some stupid shit. Yes. Like always. He's going to say like he wants to kill somebody, and then he wants to, you know, and then I don't Jack know. Sues him for five rounds. Um, do you think Jack Hermanson can beat him? Yes. He's got he's he's got the the tools to beat him, but I mean it's not that hard knowing that Juliana Pena beat Amanda Nunes, knowing that guys that are great, you know, on let's say twelve fight win streak, ten fight win streak, are losing the fights to people that are big underdogs. So it's not. That hard for him to beat, for uh, Jack to beat Sean. But again, Sean Strickland is a nut, is a bad dude, man. He's a nut, he's a savage. He's a fucking savage, man. And he says a lot of stupid shit, and I and I enjoy it. But sometimes he's like talking about killing somebody, and I don't know. I don't know, man. But I like his fighting style. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. That's really it. Right. UFC 270. 271. I went through this last time. No? Yes. 
It just it just they just announced it on the broadcast. And let me tell you something. Israel Adesanya came out and said that's cap. That the fight's not born. The fight's not booked. They said the fight's not booked. He hasn't signed anything. Yes. He he tweeted out. He said it's cap. Yeah, he's joking. Oh, oh, Dana got mad though at the post fight press conference. He got mad. He was so mad that when the guy asked him the next question, he was like, "I don't know what you said. I'm still my still my head's still." Around uh, Adesanya, I think. Then I got mad because he called him a liar. I mean, he didn't call him a liar. The reporter said that he called him a liar. But, I mean, he said cap, and cap means that's not true. And not true is lying. But again, Adesanya... Will lose. I, I, I see Whitaker beating him. I can't see Robert Whitaker beating him. Why? Because he's got better ground game and his ground game is technical and he's not doing is not doing the same mistakes that he did against Adesanya the first time. In his last three fights, we've seen um Robert Whitaker with a better striking. He's not going in, he's not lunging and he's not looping. And Israel Adesanya is just great. He's just on the feet, he's the best on the ground. In the middleweight division, he's he can grapple, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm so excited for that fight. Um, UFC 270 also. Um, heavyweight, two giants are going at it. Gone and Francis and Ganu, they're going at it. I would love to see that fight. If I, I would love to watch it. I hope that school doesn't get in, in the way, but um, I don't know, man. I'm just so excited for 2022. It's going to be an amazing year, I believe. So I hope the COVID just goes away. I hope um, we get back to fight nights being with attendance in big arenas with 20,000 people in attendance. I hope we can go back to 2019 before all the COVID shit. Um, I don't know. I hope everybody can enjoy the next year i hope we can do whatever the fuck we want next year without the fucking covid and all this variance that is coming up um should we wrap it up Ali? yeah um thanks for watching this was a recap of ufc 269 um i don't know what to say anymore <laughs> last pay-per-view of the year it was amazing uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on social media. And yeah, Ali, anything you want to say? Just a, just a new sock. Thank fuck, that's over.